All right, welcome everyone to today's webinar. My name is Lisa Rodriguez. I'm the Director of Retail National Accounts here at Newview Trust Company. And today's webinar is going to be about checkbook control LLCs for your self-directed IRA. We are excited today to have a guest speaker, uh, Joe Siegel with us, and he'll be uh, presenting more information in just a few minutes. We do want to confess up front that we are not attorneys, we're not CPAs, we are not a fiduciary. So all information that's presented today is for educational purposes. And we encourage you to ask questions as, as the uh, webinar goes on. That way we can um, address them throughout the, the webinar. And if you would please use your Q&A feature for that we would appreciate it. So where does Newview fit in? Um, we are a custodian and we custody IRAs for clients that want choice. We've been in business for 17 years. Um, we hold more than a billion assets and we wanna make sure that we provide you with our three units. We wanna be simple, we wanna be available and we wanna be responsive to your needs. So much so that every Monday in our staff meeting, we address you know, how many calls came in and how many were answered immediately. Our service level goal is to be at 98%. And I'm happy to announce that for the last five weeks, we have exceeded that goal. So um, we, do, uh, we do practice social distancing here as a result of COVID. We um, have been here for our clients and we wanna make sure we're there for closings and, and all, that, all of your needs. So again, um, that's what we think sets us apart. So today, again, the topic is going to be checkbook controls for your self-directed IRAs. And without further ado, we have Joe Siegel here to talk to you about that more. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Newview, for having me. <clears throat> I've given this uh, talk, I think, to a, to a few of uh, Newview clients over the years. And uh, I'm hoping that there are a lot of uh, new folks in here who, uh, who can uh, uh, enjoy and learn something today from what we're gonna go over. Um, I am a lawyer. I'm having trouble getting the screen to change now for some reason, there we go, there we go. Um, I just wanna let everybody know though, I'm not your lawyer uh, and I'm not your CPA and I'm not your financial advisor. So uh, we do welcome questions. Please ask questions as we go along uh, through the Q&A box. I will see those. You'll see me looking over to my right. I'm hoping this is my best side today. Um, because you'll see me looking over to the screen every once in a while to make sure that you don't have any questions that I haven't answered as we go along. But I'll be happy to answer those as we can. Uh, if I don't answer it as we go along, I understand we will have a question and answer at the end. Um, one of the things I like to get a feel of is uh, sort of how many people um, uh, participate. And I know that we have a poll uh, that we can give here. So we'd like to bring that poll up and ask a question here to sort of get an idea of, uh, of, of everyone's experience with IRAs, self-direct IRAs, and checkbook control IRAs. So uh, do we have that poll? <clears throat> oh, okay. There we go, okay. So uh, just choose if you uh, have an IRA, if you have a self-directed IRA, or if you have a checkbook control LLC in your self-directed IRA. Uh, if you just go ahead and uh, answer that. I'll go ahead and give you guys a couple of seconds there to, to answer that question. I just like to know these uh, uh, poll answers because it sort of gauges how fast I'll move through some of the information and how much time I'll spend on other information based on experience of, uh, of the attendees and how, they, how they've done it. So have we got any votes coming in? How are they looking? Okay. Oh, pretty evenly split. 39% uh, have an IRA, 45% have a self-directed IRA, and 42% uh, have gone ahead and, and taken the plunge and, and done the self-directed checkbook control IRA. Wonderful. Um, so that's about the, almost a, an even split all the way down. Uh, although most of you do have a self-directed IRA, you may be considering moving into the next step and doing the checkbook control. But the first thing I always have to uh, go over, and I'll, I'll make this one quick, it's the difference between an LLC and an IRA, because what I'm going to be talking about today is bringing those two things together. 
So an LLC, of course, is a form of a business entity. It has corporate limited liability, uh, like a corporation, but it has flexibility in how it can be taxed and how it can be structured. It also doesn't have the formalities uh, of a corporation. Uh, it is managed by a manager usually. Uh, we do still see some people who set them up where they are member managed, uh, but uh, we prefer manager managed. And as we'll get to later, uh, the checkbook control LLC is always manager managed. Uh, the names of the members uh, are not published in Florida anymore uh, and are not required. Uh, you have two documents, your articles of organization and your operating agreement to form the LLC and create it. Uh, and it's very flexible for tax planning. It can be taxed as a corporation, uh, it can be taxed as a partnership, or it can be disregarded as an entity as a sole proprietorship as well. And of course, you've got your in IRA. As we saw, a lot of you already have IRAs and understand what those are. Uh, it's a way of uh, putting away money for your retirement for your heirs that can be passed to them tax-free later uh, upon your death, just automatically goes to the beneficiaries. Of course, you put money or property into an account that's held by a custodian like NewView, uh, and it grows there uh, tax-free for the most part. Of course, there are limits on the amounts that you can deposit each year uh, based on your age, uh, and also there are requirements that you must take out required minimum distributions in the future, again, based on your age. Uh, and there are also limits on the types of assets uh, that the custodian is permitted to hold uh, and the transactions that it may participate in. As you well know, if you have a, a, an IRA, you understand that there are certain things you can and cannot buy, and those we will see later still apply to a self-directed uh, IRA LL, checkbook control LLC. Uh, also, uh, single employee 401k plans, I won't be talking about those as much today, but they do work very similarly as well. Let me go ahead and do this, uh, change the next slide. There's a little gap sometimes between the slides for me um, on my end. Um, and the 401k plans we are seeing a lot more of, uh, a lot more people are doing those as single uh, member 401k plans. Um, and I see we're, we're starting to get some questions in on the chat, that's good. Uh, to be doing that. I can't see the controls at the bottom anymore. Um, I saw a question pop up there in the chat. Let me pull that up. A question, uh, can you transfer your 401k to a self-directed IRA um, if you're still with the company? Uh, there are restrictions on that. That's a very common question that we do receive often. Um, and there are a lot of restrictions on that if you are still employed by the company. Generally, you have to let the company's uh, uh, custodian maintain control of that uh, and, and on there. But back to the IRAs, of course, I put up a picture here. It's a uh, uh, just a plain vanilla ice cream cone. So a conventional IRA, there's three parties. There's the custodian, like me of you, the beneficiary, which is usually you um, for the time being, and the IRS. And the IRS, you'll see, is always a, 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 a party to everything that we do in life in the United States. Uh, the operation logistics are pretty simple. Uh, the property of the IRA is titled in the custodian's name uh, for the benefit of the beneficiary's IRA. And it's usually just stocks, bonds, uh, and mutual funds. Uh, for these, these are usually very hands-off, very passive for the investor. Uh, you don't have a lot of say in uh, what you're doing um, uh, and how it's being invested uh, or anything like that. It's all just uh, totally up to the custodian how they are going to invest it, and you just sort of give them general guidance on what your risk profile is and, and things like that. But otherwise, you don't have a lot of control over conventional IRA. Um, I'm seeing here, yeah. Uh, the questions I'm seeing come in right now, I think we're gonna be able to answer live later. And again, it's not changing screens. There we go. Uh, then there's the self-directed IRA. That's sort of like the um, ice cream cone with sprinkles on top. Again, custodian, beneficiary, and the IRS. Um, same way it's titled, everything's titled, but the beneficiary, the, the, the account holder, has a lot more control over the assets they want to hold. They just tell the custodian what it is. And as long as it's not a uh, prohibited 
transaction or a disqualified person, the custodian can can hold the property and do it, and they will do whatever the uh, beneficiary tells them as long as it is legal uh, and within the IRS guidelines to do it. And then the self-directed IRA wrapped in a checkbook control LLC. Um, that one you'll see there's now a fourth party added. We've got the LLC that's layered on top of everything. You've got your LLC, you've got your custodian, who is the sole member of the LLC. Uh, sometimes in more advanced cases, we will have multiple uh, IRAs that own the LLC, um, especially in family situations uh, where you have fathers, children, mothers, IRAs all get together into one LLC to pool their money. Uh, that's a little advanced, but we can also do that. Uh, the beneficiary um, is used, the account holder is usually the manager. However, we have had some people who choose a trusted person to act as their manager, maybe a, a, a sibling or a parent who acts as the manager of the company. And then of course the IRS, they're always there uh, everywhere we go. Um, the property of the IRA is instead titled in the LLC. Uh, it can again hold the same uh, things that a regular IRA can hold with the same exceptions that it cannot hold um, uh, collectibles and other things that we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, the LLC's manager, who's again, usually the IRA's beneficiary, executes and delivers, holds documents and bank accounts in the LLC's name. And the custodian for the benefit of the IRA is the sole member of the LLC. And the way I like to put this, the, the way a lot of people can wrap their head around this, who, who have never had a checkbook control LLC, is we tell people to think about it as if the only asset that your IRA owns is the membership interest in the LLC. Whereas it may have held mortgages and properties and uh, cryptocurrency accounts and all these other things that it may have held in the past. Now, the only thing it's gonna hold is the membership interest in the LLC, and then that LLC will own all of these other assets that have to comply with uh, the IRS guidelines. Which that was, I think I skipped one. Yeah, I skipped one. Um, okay, so how it works, how you get it set up. Of course, you're gonna, if you have a regular IRA, this is for those people who were on that first question, if they just have a traditional IRA, first you're gonna transfer your, that traditional IRA to a self-directed IRA independent custodian like NewView. So you're gonna roll that over to NewView. Then you're gonna form the LLC, and this can happen at the same time. The transfer can uh, happen at the same time that we're forming the LLC. Um, we'll go ahead and, and file the LLC with the state, um, whatever state you want that to be, and get that, that process rolling while you're also rolling the money over from your regular IRA into the NewView IRA. So then we form this LLC at the same time where the um, new view as the custodian of your self-directed IRA is the member of that LLC, of that new LLC. And you, the account holder, are usually the manager. Or again, you can't appoint anyone else as the manager so long as you trust them with your money that much. Uh, anyone can be the manager of the LLC. Uh, just understand that that manager has complete control over the LLC and can sign checks and, and buy property and sell property without the members knowing about it. They, they really should, but if it's a, not a very honest manager, they can take advantage of the situation. Once the LLC is formed um, and the uh, IRA is the member of it, then you go and you open a bank account in the IRA's name. And usually you will have a check from NewView in your hand at that point payable to the LLC. And that's going to be the first check that you deposit into uh, the bank account of the IRA. And you're going to open that IRA um, uh, LLC bank account and deposit all your money from NewView uh, that they were holding into this new bank account. Um, that's where the custodian transfers the funds to the LLC's new bank account. Once that's done, then the LLC goes out and buys investments and, and opens uh, investment accounts and buys cryptocurrency. We've had clients who have we've done these and they've bought uh, real estate, they've invested in real estate out of the country, outside the country. Uh, they've used them for, for those vehicles and things like that. Um, um, just let me look at the questions real quick. Um, I see some of these are clients of ours, welcome. 
Uh, okay. Good question. Can you pay yourself as a manager out of the account, like a salary or profit disbursement? No, don't do that. Um, and uh, who is the custodian here? The custodian, just to, just to explain again, the custodian is always going to be, in this case, New View. New View will always be your custodian, and New View as custodian of Joseph E. Siegel's IRA account number 1011111, whatever, will be the member of that. LLC and Joseph E. Siegel, I can be the manager of the LLC. I'm the manager, I'm not the member, I'm just the manager. So I have complete control over everything that the uh, LLC is doing. But but the uh, new view is still uh, in there. And uh, and uh, as, the, as the member of the LLC and making sure that things are still going well there. Um, so the advantages, of course, of doing this, um, of a self-directed IRA are to purchase non-traditional assets. Like I said, most traditional IRAs are going to put your money in a, a mutual fund or a, a very, very safe, low risk, uh, low return kind of uh, investment. And uh, that's subject to the whims of the market that you may have absolutely no control over. But the biggest advantage is also with the checkbook control. You now have control of the checkbook and you're not having to go back to the custodian uh, to request funds uh, for funding maybe a, a new mortgage. Uh, you're not having rents that are coming in. If the, if the LLC owns the property, owns the real estate, the money comes straight into the LLC and gets deposited the LLC. A hot water heater breaks you've got control and you can write the check right out of the LLC's uh, bank account to fix the hot water heater, to repair the roof. Whatever happens with the property, that can all be taken care of out of the LLC's bank account. So it gives you speed and control uh, over everything. Also, some asset protection from the IRA owner because um, in this case, the IRA name and the account number are not out there in the public view. Only the LLC's name is out there and your name as the manager is out there, but you're just a manager. Managers aren't sued. Uh, the company gets sued. But again, it's not going to affect any other assets that your IRA custodian holds on your behalf, maybe in another company or in another asset. They're not doing that. Also, asset protection for the non-IRA owner, uh, third parties that may be dealing with them are not going to be wrapped into this IRA. Yeah. Also, it's a great way to pool assets with other investors. As I said, we've set up a few of these where husband and wife uh, join up with their children's IRAs and, and we just pull them all into one LLC and then they own a percentage interest. Uh, so it'd be New View IRA, New View Trust Company as custodian, uh, for Ben, uh, New View is custodian for Janet, New View is custodian for uh, Sammy and all their children. And then depending on how much funds each one of those IRAs puts in to the uh, bank account, that will also dictate their percentage interest of the ownership of the LLC that they'll have. It's also great to own complex investments. Um, New View or any other custodian would probably not want to own directly a 20 unit apartment complex or a, uh, an interest in a uh, large office building with a lot of tenants because then those checks every month are coming to new view and any repairs are constantly going. It's, it's a full time job. So by putting the money into an LLC that you're in control of, you control the day to day money in and out and the flow and everything. But yes, uh, all expenses um, for managing uh, these assets must come from the IRA, um, from that account, from that bank account. You cannot put your own money into it. We're going to get to that here in just a second. So I just like to always point that out to people uh, to remind them of that. Let's skip a, a slide every time through this. Um, so some of the dis disadvantages. Um, and a, under a traditional self-directed IRA, um, your name would show up as uh, New View Trust Company FBO John Smith IRA or New View Trust Company FBO IRA account number. That's, that's the way most people set them up in Florida and what we're used to seeing and, and a lot of other states where we do business. 
with the IRA LLC, um, the real estate holdings LLC is going to hold everything. The member, the New View IRA, New View Trust Company uh, custodian for you, does not show up on the public record anywhere. Um, we've actually done foreclosures where New View Trust Company as custodian for so-and-so's IRA uh, and their account number was the uh, lender. And we did the foreclosure and we had to constantly redact every single document to take that account number out of everything. And it got very um, laborious, but it also got confusing for title searchers in the future and also for the court personnel because they said, well, but the owner is New View Trust Company Custodian FBO John Smith IRA number 0000. And we were always marking out the number 0000 on every document we filed. So we had to have um, an affidavit from the judge that was then sealed in the case to say that everything we've redacted is actually the person or actually the, the, the lender. So it was okay, it was, it was a lot more work. But if you just got the LLC as the lender, the LLC just appears as the lender and there's nothing to redact. Your name doesn't appear out there um, and all these other good things. Um, and again, the manager of the IRA is public. Again, you can avoid your name even appearing there if you choose a friend or a family member or a trusted advisor to be your manager of your LLC. But again, you got to make sure you choose someone that you would trust with your life and all of your money because they really have control of, uh, of your money at that point. And again, there's no requirement that the IRA's account holder, the beneficiary, be uh, the manager of the IRA. Uh, the registered agent is also public uh, for the LLC. For that reason, a lot of people just choose our law firm uh, to act as their registered agent or some other registered agent company to act as the registered agent to keep their name off of it and keep their address off the records as the registered agent. Now I want to talk about prohibited transactions. And for those of you who have self-directed IRAs, the ones who've answered yes to the number two and number three question, this is not going to be new to you. You should already know what you're prohibited from doing. Um, of course, you can't uh, sell or exchange or buy property from a disqualified person. Uh, we'll talk about who that is. Lend money uh, to that person or borrow money from that disqualified person. Uh, furnish goods services to the disqualified person. Um, transfer to or use buyer for the benefit of a disqualified person. So you'll see there's a, a trend here. Prohibited transactions first and foremost are doing anything with a disqualified person. So we're going to get to what is a disqualified person um, uh, out there. Uh, and also then there's also investing in prohibited assets. So you always have to keep in mind who I'm not allowed to do business with and who, what am I not allowed to buy or sell. So we have to keep all that in mind. So the disqualified person right here, this is a good little chart for you that I've put up here. Uh, of course, uh, you cannot do business with a disqualified person. That's the beneficiary, the beneficiary's parents, grandparents, spouse, children or children's spouses, grandchildren and their spouses, business partners, um, or a company that is owned 50% by an IRA owner or a disqualified person, uh, officers and directors of a disqualified person, or 10% or more partners in a disqualified company. This is a very fact-intensive question that usually we tell people contact us if this is an issue for you because it's complicated. And again, very fact intensive. So I ask a lot of questions about your business and how you're related to this person. Where we find this uh, spring up that people don't think about um, is with business partners. Um, you own a business with someone, an, another business with someone else and you decide it, that, per, that business partner is gonna go out and buy property and you want to use your IRA to lend money to them to buy this property there may be a problem there. So it, whether it's with NewView directly, if NewView is holding it, NewView is going to ask a lot of questions. If it's, a, if it's your LLC, you may not, it may not trigger in your mind that eh, there could be a problem here. So what we would ask is that you call us and go, hey, I'm, I'm lending money from my IRA to this guy, and we do have other businesses that we've held together in the past. We have businesses we hold together now. You know, we've done business before. We may not be really partners uh, in, 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 on paper in that it's never been written down, but we've done a lot of business with each other over the years. So I need to talk to you and figure out, 
would they be disqualified? And are you in a gray area? Are you in a red zone? Are you fine? Um, qualified persons, of course, who you can do business with. Um, your father-in-law, mother-in-law, siblings, uh, brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles, and cousins, uh, and any other unrelated person. So that's why we, we say, you know, try to find a stranger to lend money to, buy from, sell to, anything like that. Um, also, any other companies uh, and anyone who is unrelated to the beneficiary uh, by family or business relations in any way whatsoever. All those people are safe. Uh, you can do business with any of them and you'll be just fine. Now, prohibited transactions. So that's the disqualified persons. Of course, it's a prohibited transaction to do business with a disqualified person in your IRA, with your IRA funds. Assets are, there are also some prohibited assets. So of course, uh, if you have a self-directed IRA, you already understand that you can invest your IRA funds and you wouldn't be able to do this with a, a, a self-directed IRA uh, custodian like NewView, but uh, with someone like NewView, you could invest in precious metals, cryptocurrency, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, tax liens, tax deeds, real estate, uh, secured notes, unsecured notes, mortgages, um, and small businesses, partnerships, JVs, uh, mobile home parks. Uh, we, we've seen all kinds of different things uh, out there. But there are certain things that you are definitely, by law, you cannot invest your IRA money in. No matter what, you cannot invest in life insurance contracts. Uh, life insurance policies are, are verboten. Stock uh, in an entity that's uh, a subchapter S corporation. That's not so much uh, a problem for the IRA, but it will cause the subchapter S corporation to lose its subchapter S corporate status and it would be taxed as a C corporation instead. So we just always throw that out there as a warning to people. Uh, that you could cause a, an S corporation to lose its status and re revert to a C. Also, any items classified as a collectible. So you can't buy collectible cars, furniture, stamps, art, uh, antiques, uh, antique rugs, guns, anything like that. Those are all prohibited uh, inside your IRA. You can't use those. So some examples, uh, if the IRA owns a home, uh, then the IRA owner uh, or their spouse parents, children, or grandchildren can never, ever stay in the home overnight. So if you use this, your IRA funds to buy a vacation home, a vacation rental house out at the beach, a condo, you can never stay there ever. And we have clients who do this. They buy vacation rentals out at the beaches and they, they rent them out for short-term rentals. Um, but they understand that they are never allowed to stay there at all, um, period. Um, also, by the same token, don't take your own personal funds and and spend any money on on that asset because uh, that's we'll get to that later. But that's considered a, a unlawful contribution. Um, if the IRA owns a riding lawnmower, <laughs> the IRA owner cannot borrow the lawnmower to mow their own lawn. Um, I, the only thing I can think of, and these are from real cases. Uh, I guess somebody bought a lawnmower. Uh, and rented it out to, to landscape companies. And that's how they made their money, the renting lawn equipment. Um, airplane hangers, this is another real case that came up. You can't store the owner's uh, plane in the hangar, uh, even for one night. Um, we've had a, a client who bought a lot of land up in Georgia and uh, then wanted to use it to go hunting or even take a picnic, and we said, no, you're not allowed to ever walk on that. You or any of your family, except brothers and sisters, they could go. Um, but no one else uh, related to you can use that land. Uh, also, disqualified persons, this is what I was talking about, cannot provide substantial services, including uncompensated services, to or, or for the benefit of the IRA LLC, or your self-directed IRA, uh, if, it's, if it's even held directly by NewView, you can't provide your own substantial services. So an example of this is like I was saying, if um, the house needs painting, you can't just run in there and say, well, look, the painters didn't show up today and I got a tenant coming in. I'm just going to paint these walls real quick. You know, will you ever get caught? Who knows? Probably not, but you don't want to take a chance. That's technically a violation of your IRA because you have contributed money to that IRA through the form of services, 
uncompensated services that it, it's just not fair. Uh, you can't do that. It's a disguised contribution of money. Uh, and uh, if you had paid the painter the $500 out of the IRA, that would have reduced the value of the IRA fairly in the IRS eyes. Um, and otherwise, the IRS is going to consider that you just made a $500 contribution to your IRA that wasn't authorized that year. Also, um, where we've had the IRA owner and all members of the IRA owner's family um, may not pay any expenses uh, or the IRA uh, for the IRA, including the cost to form the IRA. And we run into this because whenever we do these checkbook control IRAs, we front the money out of our firm uh, uh, operating account. We uh, go ahead and do everything to get it formed. We pay the funds to get it recorded or, or get it filed with the state out of our funds. And then we, after it's completed, then we send the bill and it's paid either directly from NewView out of your account at NewView or it's paid once you've set up the account. We've had some clients go ahead and get the account set up with their bank in the LLC's name. They get their debit card and then they pay our bill, our invoice by their debit card uh, online. So uh, that, that works. And we will not accept any payment um, in advance of forming the IRA LLC uh, for that reason, because we don't want to get you in trouble by accident just by doing that. There are some companies out there that set these up and they go, well, go ahead and pay us the money. And technically that's a, a violation. That's a prohibited transaction. Uh, what happens if the IRA engages in a prohibited transaction with a disqualified person or a prohibited asset? Uh, well, the IRA will be disqualified and all of the IRA's assets uh, can be deemed to have been distributed immediately if it's, a, if it's a significant enough violation. The IRA can completely yank it and immediately tax everything um, and they'll take the full value of the assets at that time and tax you in the year of the disqualification. So it's a very bad, bad thing if it happens and you want to try to make sure it doesn't happen. Um, what happens if the IRA uh, receives unrelated business income? This is always a concern with any self-directed IRA, whether it's in an IRA, LLC, or just with someone like NewView, um, you always have the potential of unrelated business income tax. Talk to your CPA about that. Please find one who understands unrelated business income tax for typically tax exempt uh, entities so that they can file your tax return every year to make sure. And what this is, is um, uh, this is to prevent uh, tax exempt entities like a, a, a church from owning a gas station tax free. Because if that were the case, everybody would set up nonprofit entities and then own uh, hotels and, 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 and everything else and then go, well, we don't have to pay any tax on it. But if it's unrelated business income that is unrelated to your, your nonprofit status or your tax-free status, it's going to be taxed. Um, otherwise, Exxon would be uh, a church, uh, would have been a church long ago. So uh, control versus anonymity comes into play here. Uh, you're going to be in control. Uh, and you're going to have anonymity unless you're the manager, but even then you're still only the manager. Uh, experience versus inexperience. This is one of the questions that I usually talk to people about whenever anyone calls us and says that they want to set the, one of these up. I ask a lot about how much experience you have with investing. If you've been with someone like me for a while and you've had the education, I'm a lot more comfortable. It also depends on the type of uh, investments you're planning to do. Uh, I will talk to you about those um, as well because inexperienced um, investors, inexperienced self-directed IRA people, uh, investors have no business suddenly taking complete control of the IRA money and just going willy-nilly with it. We've had a lot of people that we've been called in after the fact to fix the mistakes, fix the problems, um, and uh, uh, things like that. So. Uh, I try to keep you out of trouble before you get there. I usually recommend if you're going to do self-directed IRA, put it with new view, invest for a couple of years maybe in, in different things, dabble around, take their classes like this one, learn, learn, learn. And then once you've gotten your feet wet and you understand what you can and can't do, and you keep that in your mind, and we have a lot of very experienced investors who set these up and we set these up for them, or they're, or they're investing in assets that we know that there's never going to be a problem. Um, then we'll go ahead and, and advise them, yes, it's, it's okay to go ahead and set this up. Um, there's also a low risk, again, of disqualification in a non-self-directed IRA. There's, there's 
there's practically no risk of disqualification. And, and, and then your risk goes up whenever you go to a, a self-directed IRA, but then you've got someone like NewView who knows what you can and can't do, and they're sort of looking over your shoulder, making sure you don't screw it up. And then the highest risk, of course, like I discussed, is the self-directed IRA wrapped in a checkbook control LLC. It's easy to make a mistake um, and potentially disqualify it, or at least have some penalties from the IRS um, if you're not completely careful. So that's everything I have. I see we've got a lot of questions here. So um, a good one here. Can I transfer my company IRAs so I can oh, deal with the company? I answered that one. Um, can you pay expenses for managing these assets? Yes, the expenses for managing the assets must come from the checkbook account, uh, just like they would come from the new view account if you still had it just with new view as the custodian. Um, and in fact, you can't use any of your own money. Um, in case of foreclosure, same thing. Uh, all the funds, if, let's say you had the uh, checkbook control LLC has um, put a mortgage, uh, originated a mortgage for someone to buy a property uh, and then they don't pay, the LLC will then foreclose and all expenses for that will come from the self-directed IRA. Um, and if there are not enough uh, funds there to do that, then uh, you're going to have to put in the money uh, from yourself, uh, but you're going to have to, there, there's a special way you have to do it. Again, very fact intensive and, and special thing that we have to do. Uh, again, you cannot pay yourself as a manager out of the account, uh, no salary or profit disbursement. If you're the account holder of the IRA, all you can take are your required minimum distributions and any regular distributions um, that you can take when the time comes that you're allowed to do that. Um, and again, uh, New View in this case would be the custodian, uh, <clears throat> who is also the member of the LLC. Uh, here's a great question. What if you're, uh, you borrow from a bank to buy real estate? Anytime a self-directed IRA borrows funds uh, for any reason, uh, whether it's secured or unsecured by real estate or anything else, that has to be a non-recourse loan. So even if it's in the LLC, this LLC is borrowing money, it has to be a non-recourse loan. So the note and the mortgage or any security agreement have to be written to specifically state that the creditor will only look to the assets of the um, uh, uh, that, that is secured and nothing else. They will never come after the other assets in the uh, account of, uh, of the IRA. And um, actually, if we're looking for some rental income, for example, the IRA, actually, no, um, the question was, if you're looking for some rental income, for, the IRA might not be the best vehicle, is that correct? Not necessarily. We've got a lot of clients who own um, rental real estate in their IRA, whether it's through New View or through a checkbook control LLC. In that case, I would definitely recommend the checkbook control LLC so that rents come into the LLC, which then flow, that is the IRA um, funds. Um, and also just for repairs and things like that, uh, going forward, it's a lot faster to have your money out there. Uh, just be sure that you have enough a cushion, enough reserves set aside, as I would say to any client who's buying residential uh, or any kind of rental property, have enough set aside to handle evictions, have enough set aside to handle foreclosures, repairs, reserves for those kinds of things. Um, a good question here, if the checkbook control includes, LLC includes both the husband and wife, both have several existing notes which have not been paid off, how do we merge the notes into the LLC? That's a good question. What we do is, that's a conversation actually with NewView at that point. So because we've had clients who have had, well, I've already got outstanding mortgages and notes and things. NewView has a value that they've assigned to those. So you just need to find out what the value is that's assigned to them. And then we would do um, assignments of mortgage. We would do endorsements to the notes to assign them into the LLC. Um, and already off the bat, we would know, based on what NewView tells us, that um, Jim's IRA is worth 70% uh, and, and Jen's is worth 30%. And so that's how the, it would break down. And at that point, all money that comes in is still 
always considered 70-30, forever and ever. Um, and the only time it would change is maybe if one year Jim doesn't make a contribution and Jim does, that would change their contributions a little bit. And we would handle that with a, a little one page amendment to the operating agreement um, to keep everybody on the same page, so to speak. Um, here's someone who says they would like to transition from a checkbook LLC to a checkbook using a trust to cut down on annual expenses. Um, and do you have suggestions on identifying a trustee? That can always be used in Florida for real estate. Uh, a land trust can always be used to own real estate. Uh, and then the beneficiary of that land trust would be New View Trust Company, Custodian, FBO, and Kevin. Um, and we do that quite often because we also have a separate company called TRSTE LLC that acts as a land trustee. And we, we can do that. Um, it does cut down on your expenses, but you don't have the control. Uh, the trustee still has control of the day-to-day. -day. They're the ones who are still signing everything. So in some ways, you're not getting that true control that you have with a checkbook control LLC. And um, you can even wrap the, the checkbook control LLC can be the beneficiary of the land trust instead if you want to. Um, so there are different ways to, to do that. That just gives you two more layers between you and your IRA. I mean, the creditor and the IRA. Um, but anytime you use a trust, you still give up that control, um, but you do get even more anonymity. Uh, so what's the difference between an LLC and an SDRA and an SDRA and an LLC? Um, and I understand this presentation is a liar. Uh, the difference is what I, that, that one, I think this question came in about that time I was going through that. Um, the self-directed IRA, is an investment vehicle for a retirement account. The LLC typically can be used for anything else um, to buy or, or purchase anything and provide you with uh, uh, asset protection and everything else. And what we do is we're just wrapping, the LLC exists and then the IRA is the member of it. So it's part of it. So they're, they're not different from each other. They just work hand in hand uh, to give you control over that. Uh, if there's a small fee to open a bank account, like $10, does that come have to come from New View or can I pay that with other money? Uh, that's a very common question whenever you're opening the LLC IRA bank account. And a lot of people want to go ahead and get the account open, but they don't have the funds yet from uh, New View. So we tell people, yeah, you can open it with $10 or $100. That's usually going to be fine. It's just as soon as you put get the IRA money and put it in there, go ahead and take that $10 back out to, to clean it up. Um, we've had people who put in a hundred dollars just to get the account open and uh, and then we just they freaked out uh, when they said oh crap I put my own money in there I'm gonna get in trouble usually that's the minimum and uh, you just take it back out um, a good question can you compare the benefits challenges of a solo 401k to a self-directed IRA uh, that's a whole other discussion um, and I think New View actually has separate uh, classes on that that they could probably explain that better than I could in, in a lot less time than I can. Uh, so I'd say check with them. Um, when and how do you start to withdraw from the account or do you have to convert it back to the IRA? There's no conversion. The IRA still exists. Um, so the IRA is always there. It's just a member of the LLC and you as manager of the LLC are in control of the cash, the money in the bank account of the LLC. So you can start withdrawing. You just take your money out. I think uh, you would then just let uh, New View know that, hey, I, here's the money in, here's the money out for the year. And I took my required minimum distribution or I took a distribution or whatever so that they can keep track of it on their side as well to know what you've done uh, for your reporting to the IRS every year. Um, um, yep, we've done that one. Uh, since the IRA is, ah, this is a good question. Since the LLC is in the IRA, would the beneficiary in health inherit the LLC? Um, yes, they would. Um, so if your beneficiary um, inherits, uh, they just take over, it's still New View Trust Company, custodian your IRA, um, but now it rolls over to that person, but that is now the own, it's still the owner of the LLC, 
and that's the asset it owns. It owns the membership interest in the LLC, and that's all it owns. But then by owning the LLC, it owns whatever the LLC owns. Um, so think of it that way. What's the maximum amount of pooled investors? There is no maximum amount, uh, but the more people you get, and especially if they're unrelated, you may get into a securities issue, and I don't handle securities registrations or filings or uh, anything like that, uh, but I do have some people I recommend for that. So if you do have any uh, of those people um, it, that you're, you're looking at doing the securitization in any way, let me know. I'll be glad to send you my email <laughs> uh, that I send out to people with those references. Um, does the manager need to reside in the same state that the LLC is in? No, no requirement. Uh, the registered agent must be there, but the um, manager can be anywhere in the country. It just adds, you know, to uh, um, uh, managerial uh, hassle to get them to sign things, maybe. Um, I heard in a Roth a sibling is disqualified. Is that true? I'll leave that to someone at Newview to answer because I can't answer that question. Um, what about the uh, IRA paying romantic partners who aren't business partners? Uh, that's interesting. Romantic partners, girlfriends and uh, boyfriends are not disqualified. However, ex-husbands and ex-wives may be disqualified persons if there is still any financial entanglement still existing. Alimony, child support, post-separation uh, support, anything like that would be disqualified. But if you're completely unmarried, you can do it. Um, I think you're getting into the gray area because uh, the IRS may say, well, you're still business partners if you own property together in any other form or fashion. Um, so that may get you into trouble. Again, very fact intensive and we would want to talk about that. Um, the annual fee to new view has to come out of the IRA itself. Yes. Uh, well, no, those are different. The custodian's fees are different. The custodian's fees can be paid by the, the, the person. Um, those are different, but any expenses related to this uh, LLC must come from the IRA. Um, yeah, does the IRA have to pay its own new view asset fee versus paying with personal funds? Uh, no, no, that one's different because the custodial fees are treated differently uh, than anything else. Those can be paid from your own funds. I know personally because that's how I pay my new view fees. Uh, they come on my own personal credit card. Um, can HSA funds be transferred to an IRA? Yes. Uh, we have clients who have used their HSA accounts as well as owners of the um, LLC. So you'll have your HSA account, your IRA account, and maybe even your, if you have a solo uh, 401k, would could all be members of the LLC in their percentage ownership interest, uh, and then you're the manager, and it just sort of simplifies the management structure and the control structure from day to day. Um, can I be paid a commission as a buyer's broker for my husband's purchase in his SCRA? I would say don't do it. Um, I have run into that before um, and we recommend against it simply because it could disqualify the IRA and it's just not worth it. That, that commission is not worthwhile. So we tell people if you're a broker in any way, don't do business with your spouse's IRA um, in any way, form or fashion. Now, can you take a commission not recommended, but by the same token, you list it for free. Well, now you've provided free, uncompensated services to the IRA. Um, that could also be disqualified. So we usually recommend um, handling those, just having another broker uh, deal with them completely if there's going to be any kind of compensation or any kind of work, uncompensated work going on. Um, the checkbook control LLC does have to file tax returns each year for any unrelated business income tax. Um, if it doesn't have an unrelated business income tax, you probably don't need to file a return. But again, you'd want to discuss all of that with a, uh, a CPA to make sure uh, of what you have to file and what you don't have to file. And a checkbook control IRA can borrow money so long as it is a um, non-recourse obligation. Uh, meaning that they cannot ever, the creditor can never come after other assets. They can only take the asset that is secured and nothing else. For that reason, you're rarely ever going to see an unsecured note uh, payable from an IRA to anyone because an unsecured note, it, there's nothing for them to take at all. Uh, they just, and they, and they can't go after the assets of the LLC or the IRA 
to be uh, made whole. Um, Legal Zoom or virtual attorney, uh, we've actually had to fix theirs. They're not, at least in the past, they have not been set up to do the checkbook control LLC IRAs. Um, the operating agreement for a regular LLC out of my office is about 30 pages usually. Uh, the operating agreement for a checkbook control LLC IRA is 75 pages minimum. Uh, it has a lot of other language in it, and a lot of other terms that typical operating agreement won't have. And also the articles of organization um, have special language, limiting language for the purpose of the company. Um, if the account beneficiary is the manager of the LLC, wouldn't his or her actions with managing the asset be equivalent to a cash contribution? No, that's one thing that the IRS has looked at in the past and they've said it's okay, is the case from 1993. So that is the one one uncompensated service that you can provide uh, to the LLC and you're fine. Um, am I able to create a land trust? Yes, uh, we do it all the time. Um, T-R-S-T-E LLC is our other uh, website for that. Um, LLC are considered a taxable account at a bank and receives interest on a 1099, but the LLC is my IRA. How do I declare the taxes? Talk to the CPA. Again, you're going to have to find CPAs who understand these. There are quite a few of them uh, here in Central Florida um, who are very used to these um, and, and familiar with them and will uh, happily answer your questions and even file unrelated business income tax returns if necessary um, or file your personal tax returns and pass through that on your personal tax returns uh, if needed. Um, and can we move money back and forth between checkbook control LLC and one's brokerage IRA? Yes, actually what most of my clients do is they will open a brokerage account in the name of the LLC. And then that way, if they have lazy money that's just sitting, not doing anything, uh, then they'll be investing it uh, in whatever else they can be investing in through a brokerage account. Uh, and they're sort of day trading uh, with it and, and things like that. So. I think I've answered all the questions, so I'm going to turn control of everything back over to um, New View, and you guys have control of the screen and can conclude us up here. Thank you so much, Joe. I know that a lot of our clients use your services, and um, we appreciate it. Makes, uh, makes life easier, right? Um, so I'd like to ask everyone if you are interested or you would like to have a consultation with the sales department, if you would text now to 33339. Um, you'll be able to download our e-guide and also request a consultation. You can take a screenshot of that if you'd like so you have the information for future reference as well. And um, Joe, we thank you so much. We do, um, you know, it was very thorough, a lot of questions, a lot of interaction between uh, the viewers and, and that's what we appreciate, the time that you took for us and um, that's all I have. My pleasure. Anytime, guys. Thanks a bunch. All right. You take care, and thank you, everybody, for your time today.